This is a video about one of the many reasons why I hate Apple computers. I'm going to demonstrate to you how Apple has either purposefully or negligently made the MacBook Pro, the newer generation of MacBook Pro, worse at handling VGA input than a much a significantly older quite standard MacBook. We have here two computers, the MacBook and the MacBook Pro. Let's have a look at the MacBook. As you can see, this is a MacBook 6.1 Intel Core 2 Duo with 2.26 GHz processor and 8 gigs of RAM. Now let's look at the MacBook Pro. Here we have a MacBook Pro 9.2 with an Intel Core i5, a processor of 2.5 GHz and also 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM. You would imagine that both of these computers would have no problem handling VGA input from the monitor behind. Let's see how the MacBook handles VGA input. We have this adapter with a small head here and VGA here. Compare that with the MacBook Pro one, which is basically identical. Small, small. But this is the this is the new one that was bought with the MacBook Pro. This is one that I've had for a long time. They look the same, but I'm going to go with what Apple sold me. So this is the new one, and that goes here. This is the old one. You can see it's a little bit twisted, a little bit wonky. It goes here. So let's take the VGA cable, plug it in, and plug it into the Mac. Good. Now, it detects the display. If we look at the monitor, we can see that the resolution isn't really very nice. Let's bring it up. The VGA display defaults to 800 by 600. But at the very least, we can see that it gives us all the options right through to 1920 by 1080. The graphics card on the MacBook does not support 1920 by 1080, but at the very least, it detects it. So let's see what we can give it. Let's give it uh, 1600 by 1200. Okay, that's not bad. About 16 by 1024. Now, at the very least, you would expect that the MacBook Pro would be able to handle the same. So let's see how it handles it. So we take the cable from here, plug it into here. Now what we can see is that with the MacBook Pro, even though it's got a superior graphics card, the only options it gives us for the, for the display are 1280 by 1024, 1024 by 768, and 800 by 600. And this is what Apple thinks of its customers. Now what it's really doing is it wants you, wants to induce you to buy either, at the very least, a new adapter so you can use HDI, or to get you to buy a whole new Apple monitor, and probably with the adapter thrown in. But whatever it is, Apple does not respect you. Apple will get you to pay hundreds, if not thousands more, but you will be paying hand over fist for hardware that is really no better than stuff that you could pay for if you're buying it from any of the other major brands, you'd get the same performance, if not better, and if you put Linux on it, as I would, well then you're really going off to the races. But even if you're just using it as a Windows machine, 
you're going to save a lot of money and you're going to have a lot less disrespect than if you use Apple. And just a couple of thoughts as takeaway. First of all, I use Linux primarily and this video was edited in OpenShot on Linux, specifically on Ubuntu. But if you are going to use Apple, what I strongly recommend is that you get a second-hand MacBook. If you want a MacBook Pro, put OS X Snow Leopard on it. Don't upgrade to anything with the iCloud because it's just going to chew up more resources and make your MacBook feel like it's ancient. Get a MacBook, put OS X Snow Leopard on it, and use it as you normally would, if you're going to use Apple at all. And once OpenShot upgrades to 2.0 and it has the features that I want, I will have no need for Apple whatsoever and you can expect that I will not use my MacBook anymore. I'll probably, I'll probably sell it or maybe even give it away if I have a good reason to. But that's my take on it. Now, if you're an Apple fanboy, of course, this will fall on deaf ears. So if you're using an iPhone and an iPad and you love all your shiny things and you want to spend twice as much as you otherwise would, don't listen to this video. You've probably, you've probably switched off by now. But for the people who are on Windows, you are you can save yourself a lot of money by resisting the temptation to use Apple products. They're really not any better. Maybe they're a bit prettier, but, can, but think for yourself. The kind of expense that Apple wants to induce you to pay is not in the 10s or the 20s or the 50s. We're talking about hundreds of dollars. Talk about $700,000 more than you otherwise would spend. That's money that you could use on more hardware for on, on better hardware for Windows or for anything else. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below or send me a private message. See ya!